Hello guys, welcome to my new screencast uh, on Coding Freaks. Today I want to talk about Azure Active Directory B2C. Mm, um, and I just cover the basics here today. And um, I do this because, first of all, uh, I recognize that a lot of people don't get the idea behind B2C. That's why today we start with a little bit of PowerPointing to get the idea straight. And uh, based on this experience, I decided to um, make some uh, blog posts a few weeks ago uh, on my blogs at CodingFreaks.de um, and now I decided to, because I write those uh, in German, and now I decided to add a video streamcast here um, so the idea gets a little bit more, you know, fluid to uh, my viewers. Okay, um, what I will do here first of all is I want to start off with explaining what it is, Azure AD B2C. So, uh, first of all, what's um, regularly used, and a lot of people know it already, is Azure AD um, in terms of authenticate users. So, um, when you go to the classic approach, you have, uh, in the first area, you have an Azure Active Directory um, somewhere, and there are, let's say, a bunch of users, uh, already members of this Active Directory, and now it's pretty simple, pretty simple to just do stuff like this, to go and have an API or let's say a web app and to use OpenID um, and then to authenticate uh, users from this Active Directory uh, to your web app or your API app. So that's kind of the simple approach here, but it comes with some problems. Let's look at this. So in a lot of um, scenarios, this approach isn't sufficient because of uh, the fact that you have some users in an Azure Active Directory, but regularly you end up in scenarios where suddenly you need to authenticate users which are coming from outside the directory. Let's say you have a lot of users which are your customers, not your colleagues. Um, and in this scenario, let's say they have social accounts like Facebook or whatever, or even they don't have anything. Uh, they, they don't own an identity which you can use, which means they just, you know, um, a bunch of uh, people trying to uh, consume something you wrote, let's say a web app. And uh, now you have a problem because when you have your web app, you have to implement all those um, authentications by your own inside your web app. Um, so you have to do something which we already talked about to go to Azure Active Directory and then you have to implement OAuth and OpenID for Facebook and then you have to take care of people without any OpenID identity. And um, this is a problem uh, here at this scenario because this red arrow means you have to implement a user store and a password store and whatever by your own which, as we all know, isn't the best idea in the most scenarios. So in this case, uh, Azure AD P2C kicks in. So you don't have to do this by your own. Instead of you implement an Azure AD B2C, which is able to connect to all those uh, things, which, which means it has the ability to connect to, in, let's say, Azure Active Directory, but it, uh, it's not you know, specific to Azure AD, but instead of it uses OpenID, to connect to OAuth-enabled uh, um, um, providers, which means it can automatically do this stuff too, and connect to social accounts implementing standard authentication. And in the case uh, of users which don't have any of them, you have um, a product programmed by Microsoft employees and tested by them, so if you trust them to implement um, a secure user store, you can go there and say, yeah, if there are some users, let's um, manage those identities now inside of this Azure AD B2C. Please do this for me, uh, not I do it by my own. So, and then you just, uh, you go there and uh, authenticate against a single point from your web app to the Azure AD B2C. And you don't have to take care about all this implementation stuff on this side, you just trust your B2C. That's the basic plan behind uh, this product. So what I will show you now in this uh, screencast is 
the creation process of a B2C, how do we get one, um, the basic configuration of the B2C and a simple usage from uh, within a .NET Core web app. What I won't show you is um, connecting this guy to an Azure AD, uh, connecting this guy to external OpenID providers, uh, customizing those uh, B2C pages, you will learn what, this, what those pages are, internationalization, and implicit flow, which is a little bit more complex when you have, let's say, a web app behind uh, using an API and both of them have to be secured uh, using OpenID, you have to implement something which is called implicit flow. And I won't show you this in this uh, part of the, um, of the screencast series because I plan to make a series. So it will come, but not today. Here on the right side, I just posted some short links to the two Coding Freaks um, uh, blog posts in German, um, but they contain source code and uh, some screenshots as well. Uh, so maybe it's helpful for you guys. So with this, let's start. Uh, first of all, we have to go to the Active Direct uh, to the Azure portal, which means you already have to have an Azure subscription um, where you are able to create new resources. Because what we're going to do now, we create a new Azure AD B2C. So let's go ahead. First of all, I create a resource group and let's call this resource group um, uh, Coding Freaks because I'll do this for Coding Freaks here inside my subscription of DevDeer. DevDeer, for those who don't know, is the company which I'm working for and uh, they are supporting Coding Freaks, so that's why you see this here, just uh, to not confuse you. I'm sitting in West Europe, uh, which means um, I'll choose this uh, for my region. I go and create this resource group mm, and let's refresh this and go into this empty resource group now. So what I can do now is I create an Azure Active Directory B2C. So that's what, I, that's what I want. So I go to create this in the portal. And now you have two possibilities. First of all, create a new A to C, uh, AD B2C tenant or link an existing to my subscription. This is kind of confusing. What this means is there are two steps which you need to go when you want to create a new Azure AD B2C and would be good if Microsoft did it a little bit differently. But uh, just remember, first of all, you have to create one and then you can link one, which is kind of logical. So let me go here and enter Coding Freaks as the organization name. And let me say the initial name is Coding Freaks 2, uh, which means what I'm doing here, if you look exactly, is I'm creating a new tenant. That's what he's saying there. Um, it's kind of the same as the tenant I'm already in, which is DevDeer. Um, but this tenant is, uh, will be linked in the second step to this tenant DevDeer, which I already have. So I create a new Active Directory, basically. So now um, I have to select where I'm in. So many of you know this, I'm in Germany. So let's go ahead and we hit Create. Wait a second till it's uh, saying that it's created now, it says, and I'll come back when this process has finished. There you go, it's finished. Now, um, he says click here to manage. Uh, I don't want to do this. I go to link an existing B2C tenant to my Azure subscription. And what I do now is I just wait for him to collect all this B2C tenants which are there, which I don't. I just have one, which is the one I created in the first step. And then I say which is uh, which subscription link to, and I say please use the resource group Coding Freaks, which I created in the first step, to link all this together. And now I do this. Let's go ahead. He's validating, and he's done. Now let's go to the resource group again. And what we see now 
is there is this Azure AD B2C tenant inside my subscription, which is on, uh, on, uh, in, in another tenant, but that's not interesting. And now I go here and uh, I can say the, uh, see the properties of this new tenant, which is the main things are the Azure AD B2C tenant name and the tenant ID, which is very important later on when we uh, implement our open ID. So that's all, you don't have anything here. So what now? Uh, when you're at this point, it's a good idea to simply refresh your browser here because we have now to switch the tenant. We go here, uh, 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 switch the subscription and the tenant. And what we have is, this is, those are my favorites. And now I go to all directories and I will see this new one here, Coding Freaks. And let me start this guy so that when I go uh, here to my favorites, I have them here. So now I have Coding Freaks on Microsoft.com with this idea and the current tenant where I'm in. So what I have to do now, I have to switch the tenant. Let's go here. So now, you have to be very, very um, um, careful. Um, I, it's, it's a good thing that I have different themes. Now I, he switched the theme because in this ten, uh, tenant, I have a default theme. And you have to take a look here carefully all the time from this point on in which tenant you are doing stuff. Now I'm in Coding Freaks. And now um, I can go and uh, uh, see all my resources. There aren't any resources. And now I can go to the Azure Active Directory um, and I can go to, let's say, the users and I see nothing but my user, which comes from an external Azure Active Directory, which means from DevDeer, which is another Active Directory. And now you can see that he's a member and um, in fact, he's the admin of this Azure Active Directory, B2C. Now, let me go and search for B2C. And let's go there. And now you are inside of the configuration of the Azure AD B2C. This, uh, this means we have to wait here because he's still in the process of linking everything together and in creation of the B2C. So let us give him a minute to finish this up so that we can see uh, what's in there for us. Well, good, he's finished. So now we can take a look at the options we have. So um, here are uh, some menus, which uh, will be very uh, important right now in a minute. Um, just ignore all this um, uh, steps. We just go step by step here inside of this guy. So first of all, what we need is we have to take at the identity providers, which are here. So identity providers are, um, if, if, you, if you want to say this, are the supported external uh, or types of, let's say types of identities you want to allow inside of later on in your applications. You just define them here. Remember this last chart from PowerPoint? Let me open up this again for you guys so that we can uh, take a look where we are. Let's take a, take a look at this guy and let me go there. So in, in my chart, I said we have this guy now and I said, well, this guy connects to all of those different types or defines them. So what we're seeing now in the first step when we just created one is this area, the no identity area. So this is what he calls email um, uh, as the identity provider. And uh, what, we, what we do now, we say, okay, add an identity provider and we uh, tell the, him uh, something like, um, you know, uh, no identity or no uh, open ID or something else, just to know. The provider type of this guy will be uh, something of this. And as we see now, this is not possible to say, hey, um, just create one which is not a social identity provider or a custom identity provider with open ID. So 
let's go back here just to not confuse you more. So what we say is that local accounts is already configured and he's using email for local accounts. So local accounts is this one. It's not, not a, no, no, sorry. It's not no identity, but it's local account. Why? Because local means that this Azure AD B2C will handle those accounts, uh, which means querying for an email address, which is the username um, and uh, the email address in one step. And then, uh, um, you know, um, managing those identities by himself, by Azure Active Directory B2C. By the way, all those uh, stuff which you normally have to implement by your own, like I forgot my password, uh, is already included in this local account thing. We will see this later on. So that's sufficient because I told you in this part, I don't, uh, won't show you the stuff which is behind those guys. Um, I just tell you what's what's in there. So here are some predefined OpenID Connect providers, um, which uh, Azure AD B2C already knows how to connect to. And if you don't find one here in this list, like you don't find Azure Active Directory, you have to choose this one and uh, configure it by your own. I will show this in another uh, uh, cast. So let's keep it at this point. The next thing we can do is we can take a look at user attributes. So what are user attributes? Uh, if you know something about OpenID, um, you know that if you are in the process of authenticating, you get um, like uh, uh, something what, what's called um, uh, claims, sorry for the delay, <laughs> claims. And uh, claims are based on, um, you know, like uh, static properties on uh, the app or the user, whatever, and they are passed inside of the tokens so that you can reuse them inside of your application without querying some database or whatever. In order, first of all, to define what kind of claims will be possible, what kind of information will you hold for a single user in the future, you have this predefined list. So what you see here, he's already able to um, define some properties like city, display name or whatever. This list doesn't mean that we collect all those informations every time. It just um, um, uh, means that uh, we uh, could use them and we only could use uh, user attributes which are defined in this, in this list. So. To uh, extend this, if let's say you have some attribute which is called department and you want later on to collect this, you have to add this, add here department as a label, a name or whatever, and you can choose from three different types, free, uh, string, boolean and int for user defined ones. And you can add a description here and uh, just create. When you do this, you just extended the list of possible user attributes by department. So that's cool. So now let me just refresh this page one time. Okay, so that's it. So in just a few weeks uh, before this cast, um, this UI uh, looked a little bit different. Um, so why? This is important because in the blog series, which I, um, um, you know, mentioned just a few minutes um, ago, there was this old UI and now uh, this UI changed um, in the main area here uh, under uh, policies. So what policies are, policies are the main point where you define what kind of authentication flows you will allow to your applications. You can define here as many as you want and uh, you can later on select inside of uh, your application which policy you will um, use. So what you need is uh, you, cre you, you don't have any policies uh, to this point. First of all, you need to create a new policy 
And as you can see here, there are some recommended policies, policy types. And when you hit all, you can see there are policies for certain um, times inside of a an, um, user interaction, which means between your application, your web app and the Azure AD B2C, which you can create policies for. So when we go first of all to the recommended, um, we can see that he says, well, normally you need something for user sign up and sign in. Then you need something when the user tries to edit his profile and you need a password reset policy. So let's first of all, take a look at the sign up and sign in policy. So the sign up and sign in policy or all policies are always prefixed in the name by b2c underscore one underscore and then something you give him. So let's keep uh, things simple and call it b2c underscore one underscore sign up and in or sign up and sign in. So something like this. So now you have to select for this policy, which you create now, uh, which of the identity providers, and we only have one of them, which is a predefined local one, should be covered by this policy. So let's say and go here and say, well, the email signup policy. And uh, now you can select if multi-factor authentication should be enabled on this policy, which we don't use here. First of all, it will come later on. And now we can say, or what user attributes should we collect inside of this policy? So uh, he will uh, get some informations by default because he can't live without, which means uh, the email address or whatever. And now you can say, you know what, give me a surname and return it in the claims um, when, uh, to the web app when, so that this web app could show them. You can even show more of them and you can now select here, I don't uh, only use the surname, but the given name too. Those are the things which are uh, very important to me. And let's say we want to collect a display name too, so that we can leave it to the customer, to the user, uh, how he um, gets displayed inside of our application later on. So let's say, okay, that's it. And now let's create this policy. <clears throat> okay, and now we have the policy created. And later on, if let's say we add another identity provider, we have to remember that we go into the sign up and sign in policy and we are allowing the user to sign up and sign in um, with the new identity provider here. This is a cool um, you know, concept, I think, because this is the main area where you configure everything without even touching your application, which means, um, as you will see in a minute, this application uh, gets an user interface from B2C, from this tenant, and this user interface uh, just collects information from the user, which is, um, uh, you know, important for you, and you have to, uh, don't have to take care about any of this. So with this in uh, uh, set up here, we can just take a look at two different areas like applications, which is uh, empty currently because we don't have any application currently. And once again in the users, and when we go to all users, you see here, okay, this is again my administrator user, which I need because otherwise I can't log in here and do anything. And uh, here are some things which you may know from Azure Active Directory. And as you can see, here are a lot of things missing um, because um, you don't need them inside of B2C. Okay, let's uh, keep this in mind and now go to Visual Studio. So here we are in Visual Studio. Um, we almost got everything set up in B2C, but let's start off with a new project. So let me just go and create a new uh, project, sp.net core, and then let's uh, call it B2C sample, obviously. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and use MVC because I'm pretty used to MVC and I know it a little bit more better than this uh, Razor page stuff. 
So, and the main thing here to get an easy entry to all this B2C setup is to uh, use the authentication assistant here in Visual Studio. <coughs> so, what uh, kinds of authentications do we have? We have, of course, no authentication, it's not interesting. We have individual user accounts, which uh, normally says store user accounts in app. So this is, uh, let me just bring up PowerPoint again to clear things up again. Um, this is a guy uh, which is uh, telling us go to this area. Uh, no, just a second. Uh, what I'm telling about, yeah. I'm, I'm right. So this is this area where we say we want to manage our identities um, in, uh, in a store which is related somehow to this web app. So this is this option. Then we have worker school accounts. Worker school accounts is, um, they, they could name it Azure Active Directory because for instance, in my case, I would say, hey, my, um, uh, whoa, I just, did something wrong let me <laughs> oh, I just you know it's because my me, my mic is in the way between uh, in the visual way between me um, and um, and my keyboard uh, because I have a front mic uh, so let me just get rid of this project um, and create a new one sorry for this um, B2C sample, big C. So once again, web application change of authentication. So there we were. So this is not an option. Worker school account means devdeer.com. And now I can select single or multi organizations. If you don't know the difference, single organization is the most obvious way because I know it and multiple organization tells us well, currently, maybe I want to run it on devd.com, but I want this app to have the ability to run on any Azure AD tenant. So and then we have Windows authentication. So nothing's in here uh, in the first obvious uh, um, site. So back to individual user accounts, here's something which says connect to, a, to an existing user store in the cloud. And that is exactly what Azure, what Azure, Azure AD uh, B2C is, it is a user store in the cloud. So a lot of uh, settings here sound pretty familiar to us. First of all, the domain name. Well, let me go to the portal. The domain name is simply the resource name here or whatever they call it, domain name here. It's even better, yeah. Let's copy this out, paste it in. We need an application ID. Well, we don't have any applications yet. So now I create one and I call it B2C sample, like my web app is called too. And I tell him it is a web app. It's not a native app. So <coughs> now he wants to know um, reply URL. What is a reply URL here? It's coming from OpenID. It is an endpoint he will call when, um, you know, authentication happened on his side and then he wants to call back something. So I will give him HTTPS localhost because that's how I, um, well, I have to localhost then uh, 44390 uh, and then um, as you can see here, there are callback paths which are already known and I use this sign in YDC callback path, uh, simply. We come back, back later to this point. That's all I have to set up. And I go here and get a little moment later. Yeah, now I get an application and just copy out this ID and copy in this ID, paste in this ID here. Now he wants the name of my sign up or sign in policy. So remember this, it was user flows and this is my sign up or sign in policy and I copy this name out, but now he wants to uh, retrieve a password uh, reset policy name too, which if we think ab about this is pretty clear because if this is a user store in the cloud, 
Well, then password resetting is um, a thing which is very important to users because they manage uh, those user accounts by themselves. So now I go here and click create one. And now I use password reset as a pattern. And I just call it password reset. And I say, yeah, use this, uh, again, this mail address uh, uh, provider too. And I don't need any claims in this case. So I create this password reset policy. And then I copy out its name and paste it in here. Uh, we don't know and uh, we don't need an edit profile policy if we don't want. Um, because, um, you know, we simply don't allow um, uh, profile editing. We can add this later on. Okay, so now go here and then let's see what happened. So first look uh, is at app settings and it's simple as this. He just um, created an Azure AD B2C entry with all those informations inside. And as you can see, there's a point if you will add an edit profile policy, you would do it at this point. So first thing, second thing is uh, startup. So in startup, he already added the ad authentication and uh, he uses uh, Azure AD B2C, which is coming out of a namespace, which in fact comes out of a NuGet package. Uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core uh, authentication Azure AD B2C UI. And uh, there are convenient uh, methods which you can use to configure your services with and then he says, use authentication, just uh, hooks it in into the application builder so that authentication is there. So mainly it's that's it and let's start um, our application. So the default application, first of all, won't work because as you can see, we are using HTTPS, but we are on the wrong port. So, okay, let's just close it and we know it, it can't work. Go to the launch settings and say 44390 um, is our port for HTTPS. And that is exactly one we, what we want to use. Uh, let's try again. If it's working, looks good. And I'll try to sign in. And what he does now is he redirects directly to look at the URL codingfreaks.b2clockin.com and something else. So this screen, this user interface, which you see now, isn't hosted at our site. It host, it's hosted by Microsoft um, and in fact by our Azure AD B2C. As I told you at the beginning, there is a way to customize um, most of the areas or all of the areas here, um, but that's not part of this tutorial. So just to give you a sneak preview, you can change everything here on this page. And there is, uh, how can I show you? There is a rec rectangular area, which you have to keep for B2C to inject those forms here. Um, and he takes care of all the stuff. You just provide like a skeleton for your for this uh, page, and you can do this in Azure AD B two C, um, which I will show you another time. So now, from the perspective here of B two C, I don't have any user. I, I have one, but let's let's pretend I don't have a user. Um, so let's go here and say sign up. So that what that's what's happening. Um, he provides us with an um, with a formula uh, which he creates and uh, we just provide him an email address. Let's say I use um, another one. Mm, let's say I use uh, this one and then I send a verification code to this mail and now I should retrieve one on this mail, let me just uh, check this out. Yeah, I got a code and let me just enter in this code. Uh, I got it on my phone, so I have to zoom a little bit. 
So I now verify this code and he verified it and let me just give him a password. And confirm it. And I change the uh, display name. Oh. And I give him my given name, uh, Alex. So, and then I go ahead and create my user. So, <clears throat> now I am greeted by Hello Coding Freaks, which is my display name. Let's take a look what happened, because that's the interesting part, what happened in B2C in the AAD B2C. So let's go here and let's take a look at users here. And as you now can see, there's suddenly he created a new, oh, but not me, he, but me created a new user here. And those are the properties of this user. And um, I could edit them here or can reset its password or whatever uh, here and can do a lot of stuff and then I get some graphics from the logins and I get the audit logs here um, or the sign-ins, no sign-ins currently seen. Let me, should be in one, let me see if I stop this guy and I restart this guy and then I go to sign out and sign in again and then I use my mail address and my password. So now I should have a sign in. Uh, uh, let me refresh this. No sign is found. Good. I, I love it when the demos work. Um, but at least we have an audit log. Um, at least something. I, I guess sign-ins will come later on. It's just a word. Oh, let's see. He's working. No, not not lucky. So should be there. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> you get the point. So now up to this point, it's already a huge, huge, um, how to say, uh, a huge help, uh, which is coming from B2C, because what I have now is a user storage without spinning up an, um, an own SQL server or whatever database without implementing hash, password hash storage, password resetting, stuff like that. Um, I could, uh, I don't have an edit profile page here, so it makes no sense, but I could have an edit profile here. I even could uh, let the user change its avatar or whatever. And from this point on, we uh, can use Azure Graph, for instance, to access even more properties from this user if we want to. So this is pretty simple and all the stuff in the source code, let me go here, let's take a look again, let me show you. There's a home controller, a pretty easy home controller, then there is a view, which is the standard pattern, which says there's an ASP area, Azure AD B2C, which has an account controller and a sign-in. It's not, it's not seen here at any, at any point. You don't see it because all this is hooked by uh, the middleware, which comes in in the startup. All this is done by um, uh, hooked in Azure AD B2C um, and um, then it's just working. So if you want to protect your complete site, it's just all about... Uh, for instance, going to the controller and saying, no, 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 you know what? Um, this one, this guy needs to be authenticated. Um, authorize. Authorize. Um, and maybe the privacy terms are allowed to be anonymous. So let's start off again and now he should go to the sign-in page. No, he's not. But that's sad. Where am I? Localhost has authorized. Why? Privacy is cool. Home is cool. Oh, because I'm authorized. Well, that's bad. Sign out and uh, let's go to home. And now it says, no, 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 no. You can't access this. Obviously, that's, that has nothing to do with B2C. But this is a pretty good experience because you can control how user flowing in. 
And I I did a lot of I, I missed here a lot of stuff like um, he's using cookies somehow I don't know how, and uh, and so on. If you want to gain more control over all this B two C stuff, well, there are uh, some uh, <clears throat> some other uh, demos out there. I can show you one. Let me just open this file which I got from GitHub. And it's, um, no, it is samples. Yeah, I got this one before. It shows the same thing, but uh, a little bit different. Let me show you what's going on here. Um, uh, if we go to startup in this point, uh, you can see that it's uh, far more, you know, complicated because what they do, they invented an extension method which is called add azure db 2 c which comes after add authentication in the pipeline mm, and then uh, when we take a look at this extension method this one comes from uh, this extensions class where are they what the heck is going on uh, let me just go ahead and check this out ah yeah there it is uh, as you can see here, it's there. So it's adding all the stuff. And then there are Azure AD B2C options as a class, which is used uh, to map those properties from the configuration. But that's not the uh, main thing. The main thing is it has an OpenID Connect option setter. And what this allows him to do in this sample is that he's hooking those event, events in the lifetime of the session to methods here, to callback methods. And uh, you, you can take this as an example on how to go into uh, all this stuff, how to react, how to put in token cache or public client applications or whatever, all this stuff when you need more control. Um, good. Should I provide somehow what's the uh, what's the name of this repository? Is it here somewhere? Uh, no, it isn't. Um, let me take a look here so I can at least give you the URL of this guy. Mm, where is it? Repos and then samples. This is the directory, and let me go to GitHub because. I forgot to github.com and let me search for this string. Uh, is it somewhere? Uh, no, it isn't. So I will put in the um, the point into the uh, description of YouTube so you get it. But um, anyway, let me wrap things up a little bit by just again looking first of all to the portal. The setup of B2C isn't that complicated. You have to remember, go to your own subscription into your tenant, which is your real active directory in the subscription there and create a new resource and then combine this resource or connect it to your subscription. So Microsoft knows where the money uh, goes in. Then you switch accounts here and you go to um, your b2c directory and then when you're in your b2c azure directory you search for b2c as you might remember which is this guy azure ad b2c and then you come to this pane here the main thing is to um, uh, set up identity providers one is set up every time uh, which is the email provider um, and the second step uh, will be to create user flows. And as you now know, when you are in the sign up and sign in user flow, and let's pretend or let's imagine you have um, like more of the providers, you can easily switch off local account, which means, you know, I have this policy um, for sign up, sign in, and this policy only allows, for instance, social accounts. So how you um, how this is done, I show you the next time. But back to our uh, summary. So when you have those policy, and you always obviously need sign up, sign in, and password reset. Uh, the next step is 
to create an application which is simply all we need is this ID and the callback path. So the main thing here is those reply URLs should point to the same domain. You can add more of them, but a good practice would be um, for let's say you have three stages like dev, test and production to have three applications here. Let's say B2C sample dev, which points to localhost, B2C sample test, which will point to your test server and so on. So that would be a good point. So now in this uh, thing, we choose web app and we are able to get an application ID. With all this stuff together, the last thing is to generate your project with, if you want your pattern, let's go back to the cool one, to the, or let's say not the cool one, but the, the easy one, which was generated by uh, Microsoft. Uh, and here, this is pretty all you need if you have your app settings pointing to exact the string and everything is set up correctly. And if you remember that you have to synchronize this setting with the thing which is set up here in the application, which is this one. So otherwise you will get errors when he comes back. So with this, you simply hit a five and you can sign in. This was the basic part of Azure AD B2C. I just hope it was um, clarifying some stuff and it was useful. I just uh, saw that a lot of tutorials out there are either outdated or skipping stuff um, or are simply too deep or whatever. And that's why I just created this thing. So give me feedback if you want to and have a nice day.